For the invitation to you that are at home and those that are here seated, seated and some standing to, to uh, help us out this morning uh, to sing and to pray and to give praise to God who has been good yes, and kind yes, to yes. us. Uh, I was sitting home uh, this week and watching the news and hearing about what Putin is uh, doing over in Russia and Lord have mercy. what the uh, group called QAnon is, is doing here in this country and, and how uh, the shootings in, in our cities and our towns and our neighborhoods and, and all the things that are going on in the world. Friends and neighbors are in the hospital. Uh, we have families that are bereaved and going through a variety of different things. And then as I sit there, as I sit there, yes, uh, yes. God, God uh, whispered in my ears and said uh, that when you get there Sunday, this song, uh, you, you, we need to sing it. And not only for your ears, but for the ears of, of all of us. Uh, yes. The name of the song is We That uh, He Knows Just How Much we can bear. He knows, and that He is our our heavenly Father. Yes. He knows. Yes. He knows just. He knows just how much we can bear. He, we can bear. Uh, uh, and so, I asked if you turn in your hymnal to hymnal 250, and asked if you, along with the deacons, would lift our voices in song. We're going to be singing uh, the chorus. The first, second, second, the first and second, first and second, and then after uh, we finish the song, uh, Brother Raymond Cousins is going to read scripture, and then after Brother Cousins uh, reads scripture, Brother Ricky Lacey will take us to the throne of grace. So if you ask if you would turn in your hymnals to hymnal 250, he knows, he knows, he knows yeah. Just, just how much. Oh yes. Just he knows just how, how much, much yeah. we can we we can we can bear. He he knows. So we we lift lift up your 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 your, your voices in song and yes, sing along yes. with us. Sing oh, along yes. with us. Yes. Just as 
us for strength and keep on toiling though the tear drops fall you have a joy of this assurance the heavenly father will always answer prayers for he knows yes he knows just how much we can bear now this second verse think of the times you've had the question that down in your heart now just what shall I do then you are kind in your friends and loved ones but they are having troubles too a God who rules the earth and heaven. In him let's believe from every pain and care. For he knows yes he knows just how much He knows. Yeah. As yeah, long as yeah. he knows, long he, long knows he knows about yes, it. Yes, sir. We, we don't have to worry about nothing. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. But but sometimes Come on. the low gets heavy. Yeah. As oh yeah. Sometimes. Yes, it gets heavy. But 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 know this that God is still sitting on the throne. Oh yes. He's and he's able to do more than what he's he's able to, to do more than than what we could ever think. Yes, yes. More than what we could 
could ever think or do. So when I asked the Brother Cousins if he would come to us with scripture and to be followed by him with Brother Ricky Lacey with prayer. Good morning, everyone. I'm blessed to be here today. That's right, that's right, that's right. God's been good to me. Yeah. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I ask him, Lord, touch me. Yeah. Order my steps. Mm -hmm. Reveal your word to me. Yeah. Because I'm just one person. Some things not to read, and I just don't understand it. <laughs> and I have to go back and read it over again. Yeah. yeah. And I understand it a little better. Yeah. And I read it again. That's and right. I understand it a little better and better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come up from y'all from Psalm 16, 1 through 5. I'll give you a little time to get it. Tell you a little story. I went fishing yesterday with this white guy, and uh, we was talking, and uh, he just told me, he said, Raymond, there's something about you that I really like. I said, Well, something about you I really like too. <laughs> and I was wondering why he was saying this. He said, I, You got a little shine about you. Mm -hmm. I said, what are you talking about? Yeah. I mean, you come out, and you're always talking about the good Lord. Yeah. yeah. And I tell him, I looked at him, I said, who better else to talk about? That's right. That's right. Huh? That's right. That's right. And That's God's right. good. I said, who better else to talk about? That's right. That's right. I don't right. want to talk about you. Yes, right. I don't know. I don't want to know about you. I don't want to talk about me. Because I don't want you to know about me. Yeah. But I know Jesus. That's right. Now, That's right. I'm telling you, we come down the highway flying, and we was just clapping our hands, and, and we was talking about the Lord. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't even think the boy had it in his heart. Yeah. See, that's where we go when we judge people. Yeah. Yeah. That's we can't right. judge everyone. Yeah. Now, I didn't know. He, I didn't know he knew the Lord like that. Yeah. We got quoting scriptures. He got to quote them back to me. I said, Lord, ain't you good? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm good. I'm gonna continue. Psalm 16, 1 through 5. And it says, Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. Yeah. O my soul that hasn't said unto the Lord, that are my Lord, mm -hmm. may goodness extend it not to these, but to the saints that are in the earth. And let the excellent in whom is all my delight. Mm -hmm. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that has an after another God. Yeah. Their drink offering of the blood. Mm -hmm. Will I not offer, not taking up their name in my lips? Mm -hmm. But the Lord is, the Lord is yeah. the portion of my inheritance yeah. and of my cup yeah. that maintains my life. Yeah. I just read to y'all Psalm 16, 1 through 5. May the Lord add a blessing in reading and doing and hearing of his word. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. I got Jesus on my mind this hey, morning. Yeah, yeah. Ain't no better person. You know that God is good. All the time, all the time. He's doing it in generations. Yes. He's, he got me to belong to this church. So can we go in the morning prayer? Yes, yes, Lord Jesus. Christ's Father. Yes. For one more time in the house of the Lord. Yeah, thank you, Lord. God, you so loved my life. Mm-hmm. You gave me strength. Oh yes, oh yes, you yes. You gave me mercy. Yeah. Huh. Yes. Touch him, Lord. Touch him. Lord, I love my father. Yes, call on him. He's good to me. Yes, yes, yes. Touch him, Lord. Please, Lord Jesus, touch him. Give him strength. Yes. Give him mercy. Oh, yes. To do it in the generations. Yes. Heavenly Father, touch my mother. Yeah, please, touch her, Lord. Give him strength. Please, 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 Lord Jesus. Touch her in her life. Yes. Lord, 
cutting. Yeah. You know, somebody shooting in the Newburgh. Lord have mercy. Mercy, mercy. Four people got shot. Lord. We need you, Lord. Right now, right now, Lord. Right now. Right now. Touch a minister. Please, Lord Jesus. Touch Let him, touch him come him. back. Yes, Be with Lord us. Jesus. All right. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Yes. Touch my brother Donnie. Yes. Touch my nephew. Yes. Touch my niece. Mm. Touch Sir Love. Her daughter get married next next week. Mm. I'm going to be in her wedding. All right, all right. Give me strength. Yes, Lord. Please, Lord. Yes, yes. Touch all of my family, dear Lord. The Touch hospital, them. the Touch sick, them, Lord. the shelling, yeah, yeah, the one yeah. in the hospital. Touch them, Lord. The Touch them. To lose the, their loved ones. Heavenly Father. Church. Anniversary, Heavenly yes, Father. Yes, yes. Touch the collections. Touch everybody there. Yes. Touch that choir members. Yes, Lord. The deacon board. Yes. The urchin board. Yes. That's right. That's right. I need a special prayer myself, Lord. Yes. You give me. Yes, yes, yes. You think and found my life. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, you're so good to me. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Touch, touch my girlfriend. She needs you, Lord, right now. Right now, Lord. She needs you. Yes. Detect her. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I am on the battlefield for my Lord.
our souls will play. And I'm on the yeah, battlefield. Yeah. for the Lord and when you're on the battlefield for the Lord he fights your battles mm -hmm. that no weapon formed against you shall prosper we serve such a mighty good God and he's worthy to be praised this day this month is pastor's appreciation month and I received a gift last week, and it had a note on it. It said, Pastor, last week you did a baby dedication, and it was beautiful occasion, but Pastor, you got to learn how to hold a baby. <laughs> it said, open up this present, and when I open it up, uh. <laughs> it told me to practice holding a baby. <laughs> now, I ain't going to say who did it, Miss Jones, but <laughs> to God be the glory. <laughs> we, we, we learning and growing together. Yeah. To God be the glory. Bless her heart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This morning's responsive reading comes to us, the Lord's Prayer. Number 589, the Lord's Prayer. And I'll read the first and the second, read the last together. If you have it, please stand. There we go. I'll read the first, you read the second, we read the last together. The Lord's Prayer, the Lord's Prayer, 581, on our communion Sunday. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus in the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup, and when he had soup, saying, The cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do so the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthy shall be guilty of the body of the blood of the Lord. Examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthy eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one another all together. And if any hunger, let them eat at home. And you may come together in condemnation, and the rest I will set in order when I come. 
Amen. 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 As you remain standing for the word of, for the scripture this morning, the scripture comes to us from the book of Luke, chapter 10. Luke, chapter 10, verses 1 through 11. It says, these are the words of our Lord. After these things, the Lord appointed other seventies also and sent them two by two before his face in every city and every place where the himself would come. Therefore, he said to them, the harvest is plentiful and the laborers are few. Pray that you therefore, Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. Go your way, behold, I send forth you lambs among wolves. Mm. Carry neither your purse, nor scrip, nor shoes, and salute no man on the way. And into whosoever house you enter, first say, Peace be into this house. And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon them. If not, it shall return to you again. In the same house remain eating and drinking such things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from the house to house, and unto whosoever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things and set before you, and heal the sick, and therein and say unto them, The kingdom of God is at hand. But into whosoever city you enter and receive you not, go your way out into the streets in the same and say, even the very dust of your city will cleanse on you. We do not, we do wipe off against you, notwithstanding, but sure of this, that the kingdom of God is coming unto you. But I say unto you that you should be more tolerable in the day of Sodom than for that city on this day. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. As we pray upon God's word on this morning. Father God in heaven, Lord of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's again, O oh God, we come to the throne of grace. Thanking you, O oh Father God, for watching over us from last week to this week. Thank you, God, for watching over us from last night to early this morning. Realizing we did not get up on our own, but it was because of your grace and your mercy. You look beyond our faults. Realizing all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But you allowed us to rise up with a portion of health and strength. That when we got up this morning, oh Father God, and seen that our everything in the house was well. With Jesus on our mind, we made up our hearts to come and give you the praise and honor you're worthy of. Now, Lord, that we have entered into your gates and into your courts, we come to say thank you. We thank you, Lord, as we look out in the congregation, there were some that was ill that are doing well now. Lord, we know that some are going through something but they come to get a word from you. There are some that are tired but had enough strength to make it to the house today. And we didn't come, Father God, to play, but we come to pray. Father God, because when we think about all the things that could have happened, should have happened, that didn't happen, we got to give you some praise. Lord, when we think about it, you've been good to us. You've been better to us than we even been to ourselves. So we come, oh Father God, to worship this morning. We come to hear from you this morning. We come to honor you this morning. We come because there's no other God like you, oh Father God. We come to allow you to order our steps in the way that we should go. We come, oh Father God, knowing that we are more than conquerors. Oh, we need you this morning, oh, Father God. 
I feel in the presence somebody's going through something right now, God. They don't know how they're going to make out of it. They don't know how they're going to get out of it. They don't know if they're going to make it out of it. But all they know, they got hope in the name Jesus. There's hope in the name Jesus. There's power in the name Jesus. There's deliverance in the name Jesus. There's blessing in the name of Jesus. And they come today, oh Father God, calling on your name. Something happens when we call on your name. We pray, oh God, that you anoint this place. Allow your spirit to fall fresh upon each and every one of us. Because we can't make it without you. We need you. We're praying for the one that's sitting beside me. The one in front and behind. Realizing that we all need you. So come on in the room. Let us feel your presence. Let us worship you. And give you the highest praise, which is hallelujah. Come on in the room. Touch us from the pulpit to the door. Come on in the room. Heal somebody that's sick. Come on in the room and dry somebody's tears. Come on in the room and comfort that lonely soul. Come on in the room and fix that broken heart. Come on in the room and fix that mind that needs regulating. Come on in the room, oh Father God, and give them the, let them know that that test from the doctor is going to be all right. Come on in the room and let them know the bank account's going to get better. Come on in the room and let them know the education is going to get all right. Come on in the room and let them know the household is going to be blessed. That we're going to say, as for me and my house, we're going to continue to bless the Lord. Let us feel your presence, and we're going to give you the praise, give you the honor, and give you the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, and all of God's people, said amen, amen, and amen. Use me, Lord. Draw me nearer every day. Lord, I'm willing to run on. Lord, don't get angry. Let me stay. Lord, I'm willing oh, to run on all the way.
after bit Draw me nearer Every day to see how the ending's going to be. You didn't brought you too far to turn around. Yes, and ain't, ain't what that song, no turning back, no turning back. I'm going all the way. Because I just believe when you get to the end of the road, there's some benefits. There's going to be a place not made by man's hands. A place where the wicked cease from wearing. A place, yeah. they say the streets are made of gold. Oh, I, I, I want to go all the way. I didn't come through all of this, and do, been through this and been through that to just stop right there. I want to go all the way. See how the ending's going to be. Because one thing I know, God keeps his word. Amen. Thank you, Sister Hope. Just for a little while, I want to talk to us about verses 1, 2, and 3, Luke chapter 10, where it says, After the Lord appointed 72 others, he sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, The harvest is plentiful. <laughs> But the workers are few. He said, ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers unto his harvest field. Go, go. I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. Yes, sir. I want to talk about sent to serve. Sent to serve. All of us have a commission, a command. And this gospel this morning is made up of two parts. It's the commission of the 72 to go. And the second part is they joyous return with the benefits of going. Because if you stay with Jesus long enough, there's, there's some things that's going to come along. If you just hang around with Jesus, you're going to see some changes going on. Yeah, 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 yeah. And see, this text is, is different from Matthew's and Mark's perspective because each of them talk about the commission of going but, but, but in Luke, he talks about the return as well. Luke's version is the only one that tells of Jesus sending the 72 and the only version described the joyous return of the victory over evil. The book of Luke emphasizes the humanity of Jesus and how he was a friend to the sinner, the scattered and the secular, the scornful and the saints, and how we are all commissioned to go. 
Luke's objective is to let everybody know that you've got to believe in Jesus the Christ. So that if you believe in Jesus the Christ, you have a chance to eternal life. And this is what we call the good news. Luke uses a biblical biology memoir about Jesus and his healing in 24 chapters. You know, he talks about it in a way because Luke is known as a great physician. And at this point by chapter 10, Jesus had been traveling from Israel to Galilee preaching the gospel kingdom. He had been doing many miracles. He had been healing. He had been casting out demons. He had been showing compassion, sympathy, tenderness, mercy, and speaking firmly about the judgment of both heaven and hell. He talks about the punishment, proclaiming, and he spoke about the full counsel of God uh, to awaken these people of Israel to the necessity that you have to know the risen Savior. You've got to know him as your Redeemer. You've got to know him that can't nobody do you like Jesus. Uh Oh, let's look at what Luke talks about. I mean, in Luke 4, he talks about Jesus as the one who healed Simon's mother-in-law. In In Luke 10, in Luke 4, 40, he talks about casting out demons. In in Luke 5, there's some friends on the housetop that put a friend down. And Luke said, Jesus told them their faith has made you whole. And said, you have been forgiven. And then in Luke 6, there's a man with a withered hand. He healed. Luke talks about how Jesus will heal if you just stick around Jesus. In Luke Luke 7, there's a severe Syrian servant sick, and the Caesarean goes to Jesus and said, by your word, my servant will be healed, but for myself, I'm a man under authority. I'm not able to do such great things, but I know you can. If you just say a word, Jesus, he'll be healed, and Jesus just said a word. I'm just talking about a Jesus that would just say a word. I, did anybody come to just get a word to get closer to Jesus today? Then in chapter 7, he raises a woman's son from a place called Name in verse 8, he goes out on a ship and tells the wind to be still. Luke is telling us about a Jesus. Does anybody know about this same Jesus? He said, you got to get close to Jesus if you want to go. Luke 8, he talks about a demon-possessed man by the name of Legion. And he also talks about Jairus' daughter. He talks about a woman with issue of blood. In chapter 9, he talks about Jesus feeding the 5,000. So by the time we get to chapter 10... Jesus is on the scene. Jesus is live. Jesus is popular. Jesus has gone viral. Everybody is talking about Jesus. He said he is the son of man who comes to seek and to save those who are lost. The son of man did not come to be served but to serve. And this is when he said he picks out the disciples. And now in this chapter, he picks out 72 and said, now I'm about to send you out to go tell them what I'm about to do. The same thing I did in chapter 4, 5, 6, and 7, and 8. I'm coming along right behind you to continue to do some more because Jesus does not stop his blessings in the Bible. He's still blessing today. If you didn't get a blessing yesterday, just stick with him today and see if you ain't got a blessing. I'm just telling you, if you just stick around, there's some blessings on your side. My grandmama said every time I look around, the Lord keeps on blessing me. I dare you to stick by him and see if your blessings don't come through. He says, so he appoints them and he says oh, he's to go out on this missionary mission to serve and to let them know they were the forerunners. He said, go into the cities and the villages and let them know that Jesus is coming. That's the same message I try to tell you every day that Jesus, he's coming back. Maybe you didn't get that. Jesus is coming back. Oh, let, let us not miss that early in this sermon that, that Jesus is coming back. We know that Jesus sends them out. But you must understand, brothers and sisters, we've all been sent out. But you can't be sent out if you don't want to move. So he had picked out the 12, signifying the 12 tribes of Israel, but now he picked 72 because back in Genesis chapter 10, the Bible says listed 72 nations. 
So he's sending somebody to every nation that everybody got an opportunity to get to know Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, it won't be my fault because I'm going to tell you how to get to him. I'm going to tell you how to get him. But you're going to have to confess with your mouth. You're going to have to believe in your heart because all I can tell you that the Bible says every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. You're going to meet him one way or another. You can meet him walking down or you're going to meet him rolling down, but you're going to meet him one way. And so he sends them out, and he says, before you go, he says, ask the Lord. This word ask in this text means pray. Pray to the Lord for the harvest. That, that, that he sends some workers, and, and because he see Jesus even knew that if something happens when you pray. Oh, I don't think y'all got that. I, he, he, he knew that the prayers of the righteous availed much. Oh, and, and James said, if anyone suffers, let him pray. Yeah. He, he said, before you go, you need to pray. Yeah. And see, the reason he did that, because whenever you're going out doing something for the Lord, you can't count on your own strength. You've got to learn to call on the Lord for his grace and mercy. You need some supernatural sense. That's why First Thessalonians said, you got to pray without season. Oh, M.C. Hammer said, I got to pray just to make it through the day. you got to learn to pray. And I believe Jesus tells them something about prayer because in the Garden of Simity, when he went to pray, he told them to stay, but pray. I'm going to pray. I want you to stay, but don't just stay, pray. And see, I, I'm going to tell somebody, we pray every Sunday, but don't count on every Sunday being your only prayer. It's going to be some stuff in your life that Brother Ricky or Donnie or the deacons ain't going to be able to pray for you. The pastor's not going to be afraid for you. You've got to learn to pray. Jesus right here said, before you do anything, you've got to learn to pray. You got to pray not to enter into temptation. Temptation. You got to pray because you're going to run into some opposition. You got to pray because you're going to be talked about. You're going to pray because you're going to see some stuff you want to have that you can't have. You're going to pray because you're going to hear some stuff that make your entrepreneur don't want to solve Jesus. You're going to pray because you're going to get tired and don't want to go. You're going to need to pray because you're going to get sick and don't know if you're going to get well. You're going to pray because your money going to get funny. You're going to pray because your house is going to be torn. You got to learn to pray now unto him who's able to keep us. He said, but when you go, go two by two. And, and, and so you need some companionship on this relationship. Because everybody needs Somebody. Batman. Had Robin. Snoop. Had Dr. Dre. Paul. Had Timothy. So I'm sending you two by two. And I'm sending you two by two because every now and then you need somebody to lift you up. You need somebody to hold you up. This journey you're going to be on is going to get tough. And I need somebody that has some wisdom and some knowledge that to lift you up. So I'm sending you two by two. But not only I'm sending you that way because in the Masonic law, you needed two witnesses to make it credible. So if they did a miracle, they needed somebody else to vouch for them. So I got to send you two by two. And I'm sending you out there because the Bible says the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. And I picked this out, this harvest is plentiful because we're in the midst of celebrating harvest, homecoming. And there's a lot of people visiting the city. And I wonder how many of them know Jesus. Yeah, I knew I wasn't going to get a whole lot right there. The, the, the harvest is plentiful. 
But are you ready to go tell somebody about a Jesus that picked you up and turned you around, a Jesus that brought you out of darkness to the marvel? Are you ready to? He says, go. And Jesus says that I can be an example because I've been going from city to city, teaching and preaching, healing, telling people about my God. These are powerful words, go. Now, go, my brother and sister, is a command of action. You can't go on your blessed assurance sitting. You can't follow Jesus and stay where you are because anybody in the Bible, anybody has an encounter with Jesus, something changes, something moves. You have to sound, you've got to move. So if you're going to go, you've got to go. It's not possible to go and be in a stationary situation. God, it is requiring movement and direction for us to be sent out to go. And and Bible readers know this ain't the first time Jesus has told somebody to go. Oh, I I remember the instructions before leaving earth. Jesus, his last thing that he tells people before he ascends off into glory, he said, go and make disciples in all nations. He's telling tell us from then to now, we've got to learn to go. Oh, you didn't catch that one? Let me go back a little further. There was 10 lepers that was crying out to Jesus and have Jesus have mercy on me. And Jesus said, Jesus said, go and show yourself to the priest. And they said, hold on, wait a minute, Jesus. You want us to go back to them? Them the ones that sent us. But Jesus said, no, I want you to go and go where I tell you to go. And see, go back to the priest. Go show them that you're leper. Go show them that you're cast out. But if you go, you'll see something. If they have had not went, they would not have known the power of God. And the reason some people haven't got your blessing because you have not stepped out on faith. You have not moved. You are still standing in the same place you were five years ago. You don't know no scripture. You don't know no prayer. And if you want a change in your life, you got to get ready to go. So here it is. The lepers say, Jesus, we suffering. We sick. We cast out. We've been put out. I feel awful. I'm dreadful. I'm shameful. And you want me to go? And I'm talking to somebody today. You're suffering. You're sick. You're down. You're dreadful. You're painful. Jesus is saying, go. The word go. In scripture, it's 1,542 times. The word stay is only 62 times. I'm not a mathematician, but I would say it's probably more important to go than to stay. See, See, he wants us to go and live out the plan that he has for us. He wants us to go and walk in the promises that he has for us. He wants us to go and receive our blessing. He wants us to go because we're the light of the world. He wants us to go and change the world. He even told Moses, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Jesus says, go to all nations. In the book of Samuel, the Lord says, Samuel, how long will you mourn over Saul? Fill up your oil, your oil and go to Bethlehem and anoint the next king. Jesus gives us a, a command to go. You may not understand it, but you need to go. You may not know where, how it's going to turn out, but you need to go. You may not feel like you're qualified, but you need to go. You may not know what turn to make, but you need to go. Just like these lepers, they didn't know which way to go, how it was going to turn out, but they decided in themselves, we can't keep living like this, so we're going to go because that's what Jesus said. We're going to just step out and start walking, and as they begin, 
begin to walk. They said, Jesus said, go. We're going to be going and nothing's happening. So we just keep on going. And as they kept on going, one of them looked at it and said, hey, man, look like your face is clearing up. Hey, man, look like your hands clearing up. He said, let's keep on walking then since I see Jesus doing a little something because Jesus don't never do a little nothing. He does a big something. And as long as you keep walking with Jesus, you'll start seeing some changes in your hand. You'll start seeing some changes in your pocket. But you've got to learn to go. So, so the text says he sends them out to go. 72 tells them the harvest is plentiful, but the labels are few. And this harvest that he's looking at, he's not looking at the field. <coughs> he's not looking at vegetation. <coughs> he's not looking at fruits. He's not looking at no corn, but he's looking at people saying the harvest is plentiful. People need to know the word of God. People need to know that their life can be changed. He said the harvest is overflowing. It's abundant, and you've got to know that there are some lost souls. It's getting ready, it's getting ready to get quiet. I'm, I'm getting ready to get quiet. It's getting ready to get quiet because I'm just telling you what Jesus told me to tell you. He said, said it, it, it's plentiful. But he told me to tell you, oh, Lord, the harvest is plentiful, but you ain't got to look too far. Because some of, y'all, some of us, he said, the harvest is in a house. The harvest is in your family. The harvest is with your kids. The harvest is with your cousin. The harvest is plentiful. The harvest is right in your area. The harvest is plentiful. So where you need to go, you need to go home and tell somebody about Jesus. How do you say you love them and you won't tell them about Jesus? How do you say you love them and you won't tell them that there's a heaven and a hell? you got to keep telling everybody. we got to keep telling that lie that everybody's going to heaven. Now nah, somebody's going up, but somebody's going down. Somebody's entering in, but somebody's getting cast out. You better stop believing just you can live any kind of way and you're going to get into the pearly gate. you got to go tell somebody in the first place you need to go he says go home it's a dangerous thing you think you going to heaven living the way you want to he says you got the old things got to pass away all things become new we all sin and fall in short. We got to ask him, created me a clean heart. And, and then he said, you've got to go. And then the reason he said, you've got to pray before you go, he said, because I'm sending you out like lambs among some wolves. And against popular perception, Wolves ain't just in the street. Come on, now. Wolves dress up. Oh, Lord, it's this thin line between love and hate. He said there are some, I'm sending out as lambs among wolves. That means that you've got to know that everybody you're coming to, you're going to face some opposition. So when people start talking about you, you still got to stand on solid ground. When people say you ain't going to make it, you got to remember who the maker is. He said, because this word is, 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 a, is, is, is a new message to some people, and not everybody's going to take it in. But Jesus tells them, he said, you got to go out because the urgency of this mission is urgent right now. People need to know the Lord. People are, if you are never, ever, never, ever, you can call your cousins. I don't know where they live. Ask them to open up the newspaper. You'll never find an obituary empty. Well, come on now. 
All right. Somebody going home every day. Yes. That's why he's saying that it, 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 he said it is urgent that we tell people about the Lord. He yes. said it's so urgent. In verse 4, he said, don't take a bag, don't take your purse, don't take your sandal, don't, take, don't greet nobody on the way, just go. And I said, well, why he tell them don't take nothing? Why he tell them don't stop no way on the way? Because you got to be on your mission, and the reason why you ain't got to take nothing with you, because the Bible said, my God should supply all of my needs. And he said, I'm sending you out a lamb among wolves because it's going to be some dangerous yes. situation. Yes. It's going to be some times that you in church, you feel with the Holy Ghost, when somebody get on your nerves and you ain't forgot all the cuss words. Maybe that's not somebody else, but... It's dangerous. But the reason why he said, I'm sending you lambs among wolves, because sometimes those people that are hating, they'll be the first one that need to see that you've been convicted and converted. Yes. And, and the, the, the ones that, that curse you need to see the ones see that you've been blessed. Yes, sir. That you talked about me, but how you like me now. You didn't think I was going to make it, but I sunk on in there. I held on to God's unchanging hand. I know you thought I was going to last out. You thought I was cast out, and you didn't think I was going to make it, but I spent a man by the name of Jesus. I stuck around Jesus a little while, and I started feeling a little bit better. I didn't have much, but I had Jesus. And sometimes, long as you got King Jesus, that's enough. He said, when you go out there among those wolves, he said, all you got to remember is tell them that God will promise to strengthen you. God will promise to give you rest. God will take care of you. God will answer your prayer. God will bless you. God will protect you. God will provide for you. He said, so you ain't got to take no purse, no, no bag, or no sandal. You just learn to go. If you just go, like Jeremiah, I'll put the words in the mouth that you need to say. You just need to go. And then he said, don't stop on the road. Don't stop on the road and talk to nobody, because some people try to keep you off of where God is trying to take you. Don't mess with them. You just keep on walking where God told you to go. You just keep on going because people don't want to see you going up. But guess what? Some people can't go with you because they ain't got that spirit of God in them. Some people can't go to you because what God has for you is for you. Everybody can't get this blessing. Everybody can't get this delivered. Everybody can't get this saved. You've got to learn to just keep on going. Don't let nobody steal your joy because this joy I have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away ain't nobody gonna stop me you can talk you can plot you can plan but i'm in god's hand i don't know who i'm talking to but keep on walking keep on walking yes. he says the harvest is plentiful you're gonna be lambs among wolves but these 72 missionaries were say, well, you're going to go some places? And if they receive you, say, peace unto you. And if that peace falls on them, he says, stay, eat, and be with them. Because sometimes, You'll try to give somebody a word, and they will receive it. If you've been in church for any amount of time, it ought to have been somebody you can look around and say, I remember I told them about Jesus. It don't make sense to be in church 40 years and then bring one person to church. The pews are not full now because we're not going. We just keeping Jesus to ourselves. But Jesus got enough blessings for everybody. We must understand that the word that we have is competing with the world we're in. Come on, then. 
Let me say it again. You got to understand the word that we have is competing with the world that we're in. We got to know that heaven and earth will pass away, but the word we have yes, will not pass away. Jesus has sent us with a word. It's been planned. It's been prepared. It's been prepped for just as those days. It's the same word that we use today because the more you spend in the word, the more you can deal with the world. The more time you spend in prayer, the more time you can deal with problems. The more time you spend in church, the better you can deal with crisis. The more time you spend in mission, mi ministry, the better you can deal with misery. So he tells them to go. And then he says, I'm sending you with power. He says, go in the power. And, and it was power to evangelize, power to cast out demons, power to confess the kingdom of God is at hand. That's the statement of divinity, that the kingdom of God is at hand. Do not underestimate, do not uh, forget that the word of God has power all by itself. Yes, sir. We don't have to pump it up, prep it up. All you got to do is say the word of God. There's power in it. There's confirmation. How many know there's power in the word? There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power to get you out of your situation. There's power to make a way out of no way. There's power to open doors. There's power to break through. There's power to increase your territory. There's justifying power. It's life-giving power. It's comforting power. It's consoling power. It's breaking chain power. Power is demon set free power is shift the atmosphere power when you don't want to have to figure it out he's got power to work it out when you don't know the prognosis and diagnosis he got the power to heal your body we got to let everybody know there is power that's why Paul said I'm not ashamed of this gospel of Christ for it is the power of God so he sends them out with the power authority in the spirit. He said, take nothing with you. I'm going to supply all your needs. Mm -hmm. If you get to the house and it's peace and it returns to you, stay and eat. He said, if you welcome you in, let them know the kingdom is at hand. What do you mean, Pastor, the kingdom is at hand? And all he was telling them to tell them is that God is still on the throne. He's still a present help in times of trouble. I'm out of here. He's still a refuge and strength. He's still our light and salvation. He's still the great I am. He still sits high and looks low. He's still paying somebody's bill. He's still getting a loan approved. He's still watching over you. He still has all power over there. And since he's still doing that, our mission is to go out as disciples and make disciples. We ought to go and teach the world about the word. We ought to go forward and let everybody know that we can have salvation. We ought to go and let them know we're there for the despair. We ought to know that we comfort the ones that are broken hearted. We ought to know that we share this gospel to the hurt. We ought to know that we encourage those that are lonely. We ought to go and tell our spiritual maturity that we serve a God that is plentiful, the God that can make a way out of nowhere. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but does anybody know there's a word for you today? There's a word for you today. Does anybody come to get a word from him today? Oh, you may have been rejected. You may have been denied. But if you got Jesus on there, you got a prize. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but he said you will have power to cast out. And then here it is, as a close, in verse 17, he said, the 72 returned. And he said, eat, and they said they were so happy and they were joyful. Because once you start serving God, there, there's something on the inside that changes. When you start serving God, stuff that used to bother you don't bother you no more. When you start serving God, they can talk about you. You still going to have some peace in your mind. When, they, when there's something about so they, they, they come back and they say, Lord, even the demons submitted to your name. There was great joy with the 72. And there's great joy every time somebody comes down and gives their hand to Christ. 
There's great joy when a saint serves a sinner turns into a saint. There's great joy when somebody comes out of darkness to the marvelous light. There's great joy every time a thug asks for a hug. There's great joy when somebody gives them a, gets off a drug. There's great joy when they give their life to Christ. I don't know what you're talking about, but I remember the day I walked down. Do you remember the day you walked down? Has God moved in your life? Has God changed in your life? Is there anything different from the time you went to the time you are now? He said there was a great joy. Then Jesus himself said, Jesus said, I saw Satan falling from heaven like a lightning. Because when you got Jesus in your heart, when you got Jesus on your mind, Satan can't compete with that. Satan don't got a chance. How many of you know that the, the, this life we said, the end has already been written. So we just need to go, teach, preach, and heal. This is what he told him. He said, tell him that the kingdom of God is at hand. And if you didn't know that, he said, how do you know? If you go, my brothers and sisters, and you need a backup plan, you don't know. The Bible says, according to 1 Corinthians, Jesus has died for us. Revelation said Jesus loves us. Titus 1 and 5 said Jesus saved us. Revelation 1 and 5 said Jesus washed us. Ephesians 2 and 5 said Jesus quickened us. Colossians 1 said Jesus translated us. Revelation 1 and 6, Jesus made us priests and kings. Jesus said in 2 Timothy that Jesus called us. 1 Peter 1, he said Jesus has only begotten us. Ephesians 1 said Jesus has blessed us. Ephesians 2 said Jesus has raised us. According to 1 Corinthians, Jesus who has given the victory, he said, I have saved you. And since God has saved you, and since you've been picked up, and since we know the harvest is plentiful, since we know the labors are few, he just told me to stop by. Is anybody ready to go? Is anybody ready to get off their blessed assurance? Is anybody ready to be a child of God? But well, what do I have to do, Pastor? I'm going to tell you, and I'm in my seat. You got to tell them that your burdens are heavy, but your burden barrier is light. You got to tell them that you can be delivered from anything in your sight. You got to let them know there's somebody who can heal their body. You got to let them know there's somebody who can change anybody. You got to let them know there's somebody who can heal everybody. You got to let them know I never leave them nor forsake them. You got to let them know I'm a present help in times of trouble. You got to let them know they can call on me in the midnight hour. You got to let them know I'm still on the throne. You got to let them know that one Friday on a hill called Calvary, that took up all of your sins. I sent it all your sins. I put it all on my back. They put nails in my hand and they put nails in my feet. They put a crown on my head. They lift me up on an old rugged cross. And I said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. So the harvest is plentiful, but the labels are few. But do I got a few people here that's ready to go? Ready to go. He said, you can go because I went to Calvary. And when I went to Calvary, I stayed there all day Friday so you can go. I stayed there all day Saturday for you can go. I stayed there all day Saturday night for you can go. But the reason why I know each and every one of you have the power to go is because early Sunday morning, he got up with all power and heaven and earth in his hand to let us know. Let us know. Let us know. We are all sent to serve. We're all sent to serve. Yes, sir. We are not missionaries to stay stationary. We are sent to serve. And just as those 72 went out, we're coming back with a joy. And everybody who has been with Jesus for a while, you got a story to say of what the Lord has done. That didn't nobody do it. 
but the Lord. Does anybody have a since I met Jesus praise in here? I think we ought to be a little bit better than that. There's, if you had not met Jesus, and since I met Jesus, things are not the same. As we stand for the invitation.
but the laborers are few. The harvest is plentiful, but the
Testament of my blood. This is you as often as you drink in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until we come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthy shall be guilty of the body of the blood of the Lord. But let each one examine themselves, so let them eat that bread and drink that cup. For if they eat and drink it unworthy, eat and drink in damnation of themselves, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we judge, we are chastised of the Lord, that we should not be condemned for this world. Wherefore, my brothers, when you come together, eat, carry one another. And if any hungry, let them eat at home. They shall not come together unto condemnation, and the rest I will set in order when I come. Let us pray. Father God, as we come to take part of this communion, oh Father God, we come thanking you for what happened on Calvary's cross, that we have a chance to the tree of life. We pray, oh Father God, for each one to taste it. Examine us, oh Father God. Flush out anything that righteous and fill us with your holy righteousness, that we would be the children of God that you want us to be. And we ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and all of God's people said amen. Amen.
scripture, he said, for this communion, take this bread, represented for the body, that body that held on the Calvary's cross, but that body he got up on Sunday morning, while the world needs to forget, let's eat in remembrance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Likewise, so take the cup, represented for the blood that was shed on Calvary. Then it was pierced in his side. He said, surely this must be the Son of God. What can wash away our sins? What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood. While the world drinks to forget, let's drink in remembrance of our Lord. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Do we have any first-time visitors today? If so, would you please stand and have a word? Any first-time visitors? Seeing that we have none, or no. I'm sorry. Go right ahead. Would you like to have a word? Amen. 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 And on behalf of our pastor and the Hard Chapel Church family, we say welcome to you, not just today, but anytime our church doors are open, please feel free to worship with us. And she's running for office, right? Is she right? Yes, yeah, she's running for office. Tell, tell us about Steph. Let us know which one you're running for. She's coming up after you. Huh? She's coming up after you. He's coming this afternoon. She's coming to speak after you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I came here. <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, first, we have a thank you note. I am so grateful. Thank you to the entire church for my bridal tea. I love you all deeply. Thank you for your thoughtfulness, your kindness, and your generous heart. My sincere appreciation, Sister Natasha Andrews. Amen. You are cordially invited to attend the 25th pastoral anniversary honoring Pastor Anthony B. Torran, Galatian Missionary Baptist Church. It is today, and uh, the 3.30 p.m. afternoon worship service, uh, their guests are Pastor Samuel L. Whitlow, Jr., and the historic Calvary Missionary Baptist Church, Louisville, Kentucky. Dinner will be served after morning ser uh, service. You are cordially invited to the wedding of Natasha L. Andrews and Reverend Derek O. Deacon Sr. October the 22nd, 2022, at 2.30 in the afternoon, here at Hard Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, 1715 East Market Street, New Albany, Indiana. And Pastor and Sister Andrews did not have uh, everyone's address. We do need to update our de directory. So uh, if you did not receive an invitation, please, after morning service, I'll be in the best of you with this uh, list. We'd like for you, we really want you to come. It is their intention that everybody who wants to be here, be here. So uh, all you need to do is put your name down and uh, the number of people, like your husband and wife or whoever, and uh, if you're coming to the reception. So again, I'll be in the vestibule with this after morning service. And please, 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 it's our pastor. Amen. Our pastor. So please plan to attend. Hold on, I got some. Uh, it is a great sadness that I announced the passing of Brother Howard Offit. He was a relative of Sister Donia McPeters, and he was a schoolmate of plenty of us. And he was New Albany's policeman one time. He was a retired police officer. I have no details, but just keep that in mind, and I'm sure you will be getting uh, details of his uh, home going uh, later. Uh, Friends and Family Day is Sunday, November the 6th. And our pastor is the guest speaker. Amen. 
The count this year will be done in person only, so please invite all your friends and your family to please come and worship with us on this day. Amen. The fifth Sunday of the month is Youth Sunday with our youth in charge of the service. Also, uh, the, uh, the missionary is asking when to wear pink in honor of Breast Cancer Month, and Clark Memorial will be here after service to take your blood pressure for free. Wish. Uh, choir rehearsal this Saturday at 5 p.m. We are growing a little bit. Amen. But if everyone come out, we could grow a lot. Amen. Amen. So come on and help us out. Our birthdays and anniversary for this week are as follows. Today, the anniversary of brother and sister Cornell Elliott Jr. On Monday, birthday of Curtis Young. Thursday, Ernest Welch II. And Friday, Lionel Wall. Happy anniversary and happy birthday to all those I have mentioned. Thank you. Pastor. As you had stated, this is Pastor's Appreciation Month. And we have chosen today to honor our pastor. In my hand, I have gifts from auxiliaries and individuals. And I'm sure the church will agree with me when I say that we thank God each and every day that he chose you to come pastor us. And we pray. continue to preach his words. Amen. See, Miss Jones, I got another one. <laughs> to God be the glory. Thank you. Uh, it is such an honor that God has allowed pastor and people to come together. And that every day I, I thank God for the opportunity to pastor Howard Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. It's not because I've been so good, or I've been so right, but because we got a God that knows everything and he does everything right. We are such honored to have um, Pastor Brooks and First Lady Brooks here and she is gonna come at this time to address the church and she will let you know on her endeavors and just a God, blessing for them to be here. We thank them. Let's give her a hand praise as she comes forth. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for, well, first of all, I just want to say on behalf of all pastors and first ladies, thank you to the church for acknowledging Pastor Appreciation Day. Um, people don't have to be nice, and so it's great when your churches appreciate the leaders of the churches. So, um, I am happy that, to see that on today. Um, I'm Zanae Brooks, First Lady of New Liberty Missionary Baptist Church in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, I am, that's my shirt, Lady Z CPA. <laughs> I am running for state auditor. So it's a statewide elected office. Anybody in the state of Indiana can vote for this office. Um, I'm also a CPA. I've had 15 years almost of accounting and finance experience. Um, that and serving on not-for-profit boards and our church work in the community, we all know the disparities that exist within our communities, especially our black and brown communities. So that's really what I'm wanting to do is to figure out how to direct traffic, direct money back into our communities. Amen. So you, I'll leave some of these cards. You can go to my website, the website's on here, but I really just wanna encourage all of you to vote. Um, on behalf of our statewide candidates, on behalf of our local candidates, it is so important that we get out and use our voices yeah. to make change within the communities that we live in. Yeah. And even though this isn't you know, a presidential or governmental election, 
We still have school board races happening, recorders, judges. We can have a voice in who's representing us. And too often, our people, our black people, our people of faith don't show up and participate in this process. And so what I, I was at Harvest Homecoming yesterday and they said, you know, there's not a lot of black people down in New, Eb New Albany and Jeffersonville. And I'm like, I've seen churches full of black people. Amen. And so we got to get out, you know, show people, use our voices and vote. And then they'll start to, rec to recognize and respect our voices and the power that we have in our community especially the faith community and what we're seeing in politics right now is you got a bunch of people who don't look like us that are weaponizing the Bible in a way that that's not what we believe. And so we also need more people of faith to step up, to use their voices to say, this is the God that I serve, the God of love and, and justice and advocacy and grace and mercy and caring. And we're supposed to advocate on behalf of people. So that's really why I'm running to be a representative for all of these things in the state house, for black people, for young people, for people of faith, for women to really advocate for all of us. And I just am encouraging all of you um, to do the same, figure out how you can get involved. Our church is a missionary Baptist church, just like your church is a missionary Baptist church. And pastor said it today, missionary means we gotta go out and do something outside of these walls. Part of that includes voting. Part of that includes advocating. It includes volunteering in our communities, in our schools. So I've been an advocate for that my entire career. So I would have been a hypocrite if I would have said no when they asked me to run for this office. So that's why I'm doing that. I'll leave you guys some lit. On here, you see the voter registration deadlines, which is in three days. So check your registration to make sure you're still on the roster, they haven't been wiped clean, and then you can start voting this week on the 12th all the way through November 8th. We only got 30 days, so um, encourage people. We just have to give people something to be excited about. So if you wanna be excited about voting, you can be excited electing me. I'll be the first black woman to ever hold this office, which is crazy that that's still happening. Um, but again, like I said, there's local people on your ballots too. I'm statewide, everybody can vote for me, but I encourage you to also look up who's running here locally that you can vote for um, as well. So thank you all for listening. Thank you, Pastor, for the time. And I'll stick around afterwards too to answer any questions you may have. Oh, sorry. I should also acknowledge my husband, Pastor Daryl Brooks, who... <laughs> Today is actually my driver, so it's funny how the tables have turned now. You know, I'm used to following him around as the first lady and doing all the things, so he's been super supportive during this time. So my husband, Pastor Daryl Brooks. Hey, man, let's give God a hand praise today. Just want to say, if y'all want to feel the anointing, make sure you touch their, uh, Pastor Brooks' hand because he just tore up the SCD convention. Amen. Mighty, mighty man of God. We thank you, for, thank you for your time and thank you for coming. We thank each and every one of you. Thank you again for the appreciation to each and every one of you. Also, Miss Jones, if she's in the house, thank you for the doll babies. I'm going to practice on how to hold a baby. <laughs> To God be the glory. And then also, uh, I thank you for your prayers as time is winding down. All right. <laughs> the 22nd, the 22nd. As you said, we, did, we, not, we are not trying to leave anyone out. Everyone is invited to the wedding um, for me and this fine woman sitting on the stand up. Let everybody see you. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. So if you please just sign your name on the list if you didn't get an invitation. I'm not like Jesus. I can't get you in if you ain't on the Relam Book of Rules. <laughs> if your name ain't down, I'm telling you, we almost maxed out. So get, get, on, get, get in, get in where you can, get in where you can. So we pray that each and every one can help us celebrate this wonderful occasion of what God has brought together. Amen. And it's, it's, it's going to be hard because you can't love me without loving her. I should have got a little bit more. Amen. To God be the glory. We good? Let's stand to be dismissed. <laughs> to God be the glory. Remember.
Father God in heaven, we come. We thank you for the day. We thank you for the word that we received. Now, first, oh God, we thank you for the offering that has been taken up. We pray, oh Father God, that it be used for the lifting of thy kingdom. Bless each and every one that gave and that wanted to give, oh Father God, that we continue on moving up the King's Highway. Now, Lord, we thank you, oh Father God, for blessing us this way, oh Father God, letting us know that each one of us are sent to serve, oh Father God. We know that the the, the, the harvest is plentiful and the labels are few, but we just want to do our part and go out and be the child of God that you want us to be. Watch over us, oh, Father God, as we leave this place until we meet again. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and to present us waterless to the holy wise God, both dominion, power, and glory, henceforth and forevermore in all of God's children, saying, Amen.